triage is a movie that was released in the year 2009. It stars Colin Farrell as an Irish war photographer who covers the Kurdistan conflicts in the year 1988. Uh, the movie starts off after he and his partner have already been there for a, a while. His partner is named David. He's played by Jamie Seams. They spend most of their time following some of the, the local warriors in who are protecting and covering the makeshift war, war camps. As you might guess by the title of the movie, the a big emphasis, at least in the first 30 minutes, is placed on the on how they have to decide the doctors in the place have to decide who lives and who dies in the camp. This is some really kind of intense stuff. Like there's lots of gruesome and frightening scenes in the thing. Uh, and the way the hat works, works in the movies that the doctor, the doctor is played by uh, an actor named uh, uh, Bronco Durek, who is very good in a, in a small role. He looks at all the patients he's given, and he has these slips of paper. If, if you're given a, a yellow one, then they'll try to save you. If they give you a blue sheet of paper, you're taken out of the tent, and then the doctor himself shoots you in the head. It's, it's just a very tough situation they're in, and, and the doctor does a good job of trying to justify this, although you don't always get the feeling that he truly believes in what he, he's saying, and he's just trying to do that so he doesn't have to think about what he's doing. And now, now, the first shot of this movie shows Colin Farrell lie, lying down on the, on the ground. You can see a, a big, big ground of blood seeping around. And the first act of the movie is told something through flashbacks and flat, flash full words of him have been horrifically, horrifically wounded while in the field and then cut, being placed in, in the hospital. There's a really terrific scene in the hospital where the doctor talks to. Feral and describes what his wounds are before deciding to give him a yellow sheet or a blue sheet. And even though we know he's going to come home, it's still a really suspenseful and really well done scene there. And, the, and then also, after he comes back to Ireland in the field and tries to uh, come to terms with what he's seen there, and particularly what happened to his partner, we his partner disappears after Feral is wounded, or, or at the same time Feral is wounded. And we really get the sense that he knows more than he's letting on, and he does not want to talk to people about it, of course. It's not uncommon for people who have been traumatized more to not want to talk about things like that, and he goes so far as to even lie to his wife and to his partner's wife. His partner's wife is played by Carrie Riley, who is who is just about to give birth to the to the, the son of her and Farrell's partner. And even though... It, makes sense psychologically that he would not want to talk about what happened to him. It really kind of gets kind of frustrating in, in the story when it feels like he's withholding something from us. The fact that he's not telling us something that we're pretty sure he knows exactly what happened, but, but don't get me wrong, this is a fantastic movie. It's a very good movie. Just some of those the small dramatic quibbles really don't take much away from the overall impact. I mean, Colin Farrell's just fantastic in this movie. I mean, he's always been a really good actor, but he really doesn't get that many chances to really show us what he can do. I mean, he, of course, he won the Best Actor at the Golden Lowe's for In Bruges, which is another fa fabulous performance from him, but this is really, aside from him, that we've never really seen before. I mean, he, he, before, oh, taking, playing this part, he lost 44 pounds in order to make himself looking like a, like a broken uh, and de deprived of victim of, of war, and he really does look broken and, and deprived. Apparently, Pharaoh's friends are really worried about him because he lost so much weight, and he really does look look and feel like he's really been wounded. And even aside from just the physical thing here, his emotional performance is also very good. I mean, Colin Farrell is just such a wonderfully expressive, expressive face that even when he's trying to just kind of they brush off people's concerns with sarcasm or whatever, you can still tell through his eyes that there's something really wrong, something that's really bothering him. It's almost as if he's acting in two different directions at once. It's just a really wonderful performance, one of Farrell's best. Yeah. And the other actors are also very good. Uh, Farrell's wife is played by Paz Vega. She, she's, she tries to be supportive and she's very concerned and she can tell that he's holding something back from but she doesn't know exactly what he can do to what she can do to try to 
uh, save them. But, and, and even after he tries to reconnect with them, it really just doesn't entirely seem authentic to her. And that's when she can, re can really tell that something's wrong with them. But really, the performance in this movie that really stands out, the one that re really just grabs, it was a performance that we don't even see until the last part of the movie. This is the great Christopher Lee. He shows up as uh, Paz Vega's grandfather in the movie. He he is a he. The reason it takes so long for him to show up is because she doesn't very like like him very much. Uh, they've become very estranged, and the reason why right, they've become estranged, and the reason that she's calling him to try to help, is that he was that in the in the movie he was a. He was a therapist following the Spanish Civil War who helped to rehabilitate the soldiers of, of Franco who were feeling traumatized after the atrocities they caused under his name. And and in the eyes of the, the Paz Vega character, that, that makes him a, a fascist and a very e evil man. But it's much more complicated than that, and even though we don't get a complete sense of what happened with him during the war, it's implied that he had to really do things that he didn't like, and he says straight off that he he lost his own family during the war, and he's very, very troubled by that. They're just a very dark and ambiguous background behind this character, and, and just really fantastic. Christopher Lee just utterly dominates the last half hour of this movie. It's probably it could pro very well be the best performance I've ever seen, seen him do, and he's been act acting for like seventy odd years. He's He's worth watching in just about any move that he makes, but this is really one of his best things. He, his role is what, is what makes this movie, yeah, makes this movie work better than even most of the, the uh, post-traumatic stress disorder dramas we see nowadays. Yeah, the movie was directed by a, a Bosnian filmmaker named uh, Danis uh, Tanovic. Dennis Tanovic is best known for his Oscar-winning documentary entitled No Man's Land, and as I kind of mentioned before, he seems to be not entirely at ease with the fictional format, you know, with the, with the story that mostly draws on the stuff that Colin Farrell knows but isn't telling people, but still, he directs the action very well, he gets some really great emotional moments from the scenes both, both at home and in the war field. You really get the sense that he has passion for this material. It really, really surprises me that this movie wasn't seen by more people. I mean, it's a, I mean, sure, it's a small movie, and aside from Farrell and Lee, there aren't that many big names in it. But you think this is the sort of material that that film festivals and you know Oscar voters would jump for? But really, it was never really given that big of a release. But still, I say if you can get your hands on a copy of this movie, or if you can see it on Netflix or whatever, I'm not sure if it's on Netflix or not, but it's worth checking out. This is just a, a wonderful movie with great performances all around. And it, especially if you're a, a fan of more movies and really want to see what it can... A movie about what it really it means to have to live through and survive in a war zone. It really makes you think about the traumas that these people put themselves through in order to both fight for the things and to make sure the rest of us, you know, can see ha, what it's like for them to fight. Because, of course, the director of this movie is a documentarian and Colin Farrell plays a photographer. And there's a really great moment near the end of the movie where Christopher Lee asks him if having to see the war zone through the lens of a camera makes it seem less real to him. And in many ways, they can actually make it seem like he... He's telling that to people like me, you know, I've never seen war unless it's been through through movies or through books or photographs, so how can I really know what it, what it feels like to have to be in that situation? This is a movie that really helps helps teach us more about that. It's a really wonderful movie. I think you should check it out.